Hey, hey, hey. Today I want to talk to you about the PSP, particularly unbreaking the PSP in 2024. There are a couple of soft brick PSPs out in the wild. You may have one and that's probably the reason you are watching this video right now. Or you're just curious on how the process works. You're going to need a couple of items for this. I have the uh, thing prepared here. Um, you're going to need your magic memory stick recovery media. This could be either a regular memory stick duo or a memory stick to micro SD adapter with a micro SD card. In either case, you will need at least 30 megabytes of free space. That's not a lot. Now, you'll need some way of interfacing your card with your PC. Obviously, this can be either a micro SD to USB adapter or a memory stick dual to USB adapter. Those are out there. However, I would recommend the micro SD route. This is more cost effective. The memory stick duo is an outdated format. It's obsolete. You will only find these on eBay. The micro SD cards, even the 16 gigabytes ones are still being made. Just that cards these days that are this small are not cost effective, but that's besides the case. And you will need your Baryon sweeper uh, jig, as I call it. I made this out of a USB to UART adapter with TTL logic and a dead PSP 1000 battery. I gutted it, took the board out, I soldered wires to it. TP20 and TP21 are ground, and another wire is connected to RXI. Underneath, I scraped the trace to the serial line, which you don't need to do because TP19 goes to the serial line. You can solder the wire there. So it goes from TP19 to RXI on this board. Underneath the board, I have a 1N4148 diode with a cathode pointing towards the TXD pin and anode towards RXI. I have no other connections. It's just these two wires and that diode. Now, there is an optional um, connection you can make with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, but if if you want to keep the build materials down, even though this is a 5 cent part, you can completely omit this connection. It doesn't really make any difference. Now, now that we have our hardware out of the way, I want to get into creating your recovery media. Depending on your model of PSP, this is going to be uh, a different process. You're going to use different software. If you have a PSP 2000 V3 or PSP 3000, so a PSP 2000 with a date code 8C or greater, you're going to need the JigKick Media Creator. There is create a JigKick clone with preset MSID for microSD adapters. This is why I said um, microSD is recommended because if you're using a uh, real memory stick duo, you're going to need to dump the MSID off that memory stick duo and that requires a working PSP. If you don't have a working PSP, obviously this won't work. However, microSD adapter, there is already a preset MSID always works. Alternatively, there is a DDC version 9. So you can use that instead, try your luck. So that's for PSP 3000 and newer 2000 models. For anything older, you're going to use Rain's Ultra Light Magic Memory Stick Maker. Pretty simple program. You connect your storage and select the drive letter here. Click Make MMS. You'll need to provide the PVP file for the 5.00 firmware for both programs, I think. Actually, I don't know about uh, JK Creator. You may have to pry it there. You may not. I, I haven't tested that program, but for this, you definitely need the 5.00 firmware. Where can you get the firmware? It's very simple. DarthSturdy.net has all the PSP firmwares you could ever want. Just go two pages. There's 5.00. Download either for mega or archive.org. Doesn't matter. Now, you can already see that you're probably going to have to solder. Especially if you're using a dead PSP battery board as a jig, you're going to have to solder. You can omit the board, you can just hold your wires to these points, although I don't recommend it. Simply because that works like shit. 
All right. Now, for the program, you're going to need Pi Sweeper in addition to either of the programs I already mentioned, like the Magic Memory Stick Maker. And you're going to need to read through all this. Please read the manual, right? It's all necessary pip packages, very simple. You're going to open command, you're going to type pip install, and then let's do, for example, pi serial. You're going to want to install all of these, so just type pip install pi serial tk pi crypto dome. Like this. I've already done that, I don't need to do that again. Uh, if you're on Windows, you're also going to need to go to wherever you have Python installed. That's very simple to backtrace. Just go to your start menu. Going to find Python. Go more. Open file location. Do it again. There's a Python installation. Then you're going to go into the TCL folder. You're going to copy TCL 8.6 and TK 8.6 into your lib folder. Not libs, lib uppercase in this case. Now, once you have everything prepared, you have your Python installation prepared so that you can run the program, this is where it gets gritty, all right? So I'm gonna see you uh, on the camera. I'm gonna do that. So I have my PSP here that I'm gonna use for the demonstration. Um, I'm not going to use the micro SD method because I don't need to. I have a memory stick for this. So first thing you're going to do, obviously, take out the battery. You're going to need access to the pins right here. Now, we want to insert into the memory stick slot our magic memory stick right here, right? Obviously. All right, it's inserted. Now let's get to the fun part of using the Baryon Sweeper. So. To use a Baryon Sweeper, you're going to need a USB cable, depending on the adapter. We've got this one as micro USB, so I'm going to use a micro USB cable. I'm going to undo the Kapton tape to get easier access to the adapter. I'm going to plug it in. And there you go. If you're using a CP2102 uh, USB to York like me, you're going to need to install a driver. I think you're going to need to install a driver for pretty much all of them for I definitely I know for CH340 and CP2102 you need a driver I don't know for FT232 but I imagine you need to do do you need to uh, install a driver there as well okay back to the desktop okay back on the desktop I'm going to go into device manager real quick to show you that it is in fact plugged in there's our USB 2 yard uh, adapter that we've plugged in. It's on COM6. Remember this port. You may have multiple COM ports. Um, and you want to select the correct one in the software. Okay. So we have our Pi Sweeper script right here in this directory, if I can find it. It's a bit of a mess because I don't really keep my stuff folder tidy. That's okay. All right. So... Here's a, here's a software, it's really simple, it's a nice GUI. Depending on if you're using Windows or Linux, um, the ports are going to look different. On Linux, you're also going to have to deal with permissions. But on Linux, you'll see like dev TTY USB 0, for example. Here, there's COM1 and COM6, we're going to select COM6 and start service. Now, the LED just lit up on my uh, Baryon sweeper, and I'm going to show you on the camera now. Um, how to use it. All right, here we are. Uh, excuse the messy, dirty table, or desk rather. So now that the service is running, all we have to do in this case with the PSP uh, and the magic memory stick, we have to hold L and insert our jig at the same time while we're doing that. So I'm going to hold L I'm going to insert the jig into the PSP. Hang on, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? I didn't plug power because I'm an idiot. So let's try that again. But this time with power plugged in. I'm going to stop the service, start it again. Make sure your PSP is plugged into power. Learn from the idiot. All right, hold L, insert the jig. 
you're going to just hold it in until you see a green power LED, which you can see from the side. There we go. Keep holding L. And ideally, you should boot into the magic memory stick. And there we go. Let me show you right here. There it is. Now, now that you've done that, what can you do? You can reinsert your battery. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'll put the battery cover in as well so it doesn't flop around. Okay. There you go. You have anything you, could, you want to do. Let's install the uh, firmware, why not? See, it's formatting all your flash partitions and then it's gonna install you know, it's going to do everything to basically install the firmware. Once you're done, it's going to reboot and your PSP will be back up and running. Hopefully, I'm just doing this as a demonstration. This PSP was never bricked. I was lying. Um, but if your PSP is bricked, this will fix it right back up. And this works for PSP 3000. PSP Street, currently, there is no method. There is a method for the PSP Go, but the uh, jig, obviously, is going to be entirely different because it needs to connect to the uh, USB port on the PSP Go and not anywhere else. All right. All right. Closing words. You saw me do it. It's not that hard. You do need to solder a little bit to assemble the adapter and jig, but it's cheap. Like, the total bill of materials for me was under five years. It was like, this adapter, I, I bought it from this exact website for this much money. It's not that expensive. You don't need a PSP 1000 to make it, like the Pandora battery that requires a PSP 1000 to write the EEPROM on a working battery. So you also need a working battery. Yeah, okay. <laughs>